so don't miss Tiger's News Conference Live right here on Golf Channel at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, with the news yesterday that the Open will return to St. Andrews for its 150th anniversary in 2021, let's reflect on some iconic moments we've seen at the home of golf. It was the summer of 2000 when a 24-year-old Tiger Woods won his first claret jug and fourth major title, winning the Open at St. Andrews by eight strokes at a record 19 under par. And with the victory, he became the youngest ever to complete the career Grand Slam. Five years later, when the game's oldest championship returned to the old course, it was Tiger who was triumphant again. He led wire to wire for his 10th major title. Well, let's show you some more memorable moments from one of the most famous courses in the world. We'll go all the way back to 1917. Jack Nicklaus on the way to winning his second of three claret jugs with what was the playoff over Doug Sanders? Over Doug Sanders. Doug Sanders famously missed the short putt to force a playoff. That celebration was not well thought out, I think. <laughs> <laughs> kind of just reactionary, and he goes, wait a minute, I shouldn't have thrown that putter that high. It was an 18-hole playoff, by the way. That doesn't happen anymore. They have a four-hole aggregate in the Open. Now, 1984, Seve Ballesteros, this iconic. Tony Jacklin told me one time, he goes, Robert, I do not believe in magic, but that putt does not break that way. Seve willed that ball in the hole. That's the only way I can explain it. That was a two-shot win over Langer and Watson, and that is the iconic pose that lives on uh, with the late. Seve Balaceros. 1990, after a collapse by Greg Norman on Saturday, Nick Faldo came through to win by five um, with an incredibly good round here at the old course. And it set the scoring record there of 18 under par and just played beautifully in, in the pretty good weather that week. That scoring record stood until Tiger betted it actually in 2000, as we mentioned a moment ago. Now, 95, uh, this was incredible. Constantino Rocca chunked his second shot at 18, so he really needed a miracle, otherwise John Daly was going to win. He had to hold this from the Valley of Sin to force a playoff. It, you could only imagine what was going on in John Daly's mind. I, the chili dip, that's it. I, I won the tournament, and then that happens, and he's got to go into a four-hole playoff. Uh, what a reaction. Crazy. John Daly would end up being the champion, but it was a moment that Rocker will never forget. Now, the Women's British Open was here in 2013. Stacey Lewis birdied her final two holes. This at the famous road hole, setting up a perfect approach. And the road hole is maybe the hardest second shot in golf. I, I can't think of one that's tougher, and that was done so well. So she birdied 17, and this a long birdie attempt. Putter in the air, fist pump. That was her second career major as she posed on the famous Swilcombe Bridge. And we've had a few farewells at the old course as well, Robert. Many people chosen uh, to say goodbye to the game here, none other than Arnold Palmer. Yeah, that gives me chills. And I know everyone has got their own picture and the, when they're walking across the Swilcombe Bridge, you have to stop <laughs> and take a picture, but that was something special to him, I know, and, and this man too. I mean, it, what a, if you're gonna say goodbye, it, what a way to do it. And of course, Jack Nicholas is not going to miss a putt on the last green. <laughs> it's emotional for all of them, and he blows kisses to the crowd. This was Nick Faldo in 2015. Actually, remarkably, the same Pringle sweater that he won the Clara <laughs> Jug and fit him all these years later. And it didn't have moth holes in it or anything. Very nice. And then uh, just the same year, actually, but a lot later in the day, Tom Watson on Friday evening, this was about 9 o'clock local time, is when he chose to say goodbye, and it didn't stop the crowds coming out to support him and react to what has been uh, an incredible career for him and is still indeed going. You've been there, I know. What was your experience the first time you got to go and play the old course? I, I loved the course because I was the, into the history of the whole thing, but... The thing that stood out to me the most and the thing that I took away from it is you're driving in the little road and you drive past uh, the, old, the hotel on 17 on the road hole and it's like you drove back 200 years in time. Everything's preserved. It, it's almost the way that, uh, you know, old Tom Morris played there and, and those kind of, of people. So that's what stood out the most. That's what I took away with me, just the preservation of the history. Of yeah. St. Andrews. Growing up in the United Kingdom, I've been lucky enough to visit St. Andrews on several occasions. No matter how many times you've been, there's just a magical aura about it. Because I think if you understand the game of golf, you know its meaning in the sport. And I was most recently there last summer, actually. We stayed at the Old Course Hotel for the Women's British Open that was taking place at nearby King's Barnes every morning to wake up to that view, to go running on the beach, to have breakfast overlooking the road hole, the 18th. It's just a truly special place in golf. And we'll be heading back there in 2021. Time. So